do you want to say, Rob? I mean, I know there's so much that you must want to say. Um, well, you know, there's been a, a, an ongoing controversy at the Edgar County Airport for, for 16 or 18 months now. We'd like to have it resolved. We'd like for our county board to do their job and to get rid of the corruption at the airport. The, the people there that are hiding CD monies that are are being unprofessional, they're being untrustworthy, they're being uh, disingenuous to the taxpayers. And uh, there's a long, long list of things they've been doing. It just seems that our Edgar County Board refuses to call it for a vote or take action. How many people are on this board, uh, the airport? The airport. The airport advisory board was seven. But, uh, and let me, let me clarify that, there is a county board there's an Edgar County County Board, there's an Edgar County Airport Committee, and prior to last week, there was an Edgar County Airport Advisory Board. One of the contentious matters have been under which statute has this airport been operating, and it was just learned last week that this airport is operating under a law that does not allow for a... Uh, uh, airport advisory board. So everything that's happened in the last 20 or 30 years, according to the law now, is they don't exist. Uh, they don't have any more meetings legally. They have none scheduled at the moment. And uh, they just, as a matter of fact, the control of the airport, according to what has been declared by Mark Isaf, our uh, state's attorney, uh, the airport itself has been operating under this law that only allows that the county board make decisions and the county board airport committee make those decisions and there is no mention of, of a uh, airport advisory board. Okay, so you got the <coughs> county board that met this morning. Yes, sir. How many people are on that? Seven. Seven. And they are elected, appointed? Elected. And that's like, um, that's like in Indiana we have county commissioners. This is a county True. board. True. Right. One, of the, one of these people, yes, that's correct, one of these people was appointed to, to complete uh, a, a uh, elected officials uh, had left. Okay. How many of these um, seven. Count, seven county board members, Rob, sit on the airport board? I believe there's three. Three are on. And what's the official name of the airport board? Is it the advisory board? Well, the, uh, we're talking about the... Uh, Edgar County Board Committee, which is the, the three, and then this Edgar County Airport Advisory Board, that which, which up until last week was believed to, to have been a legitimate uh, body. Um, there are uh, seven voting members on that. And the formal name is the Airport Advisory Board. Board. That's correct. Seven on. Who pointed out that they don't truly exist in the eyes of the law? Well, um, for the last year, uh, there's been a lot of research and controversy at the airport, and part of it has been that the advisory board people don't have any rules, they don't have any uh, limits on their tenure, they don't seem to have anything except a blank check. And that has allowed them to make a number of decisions that, that are maybe uh, unpopular. So uh, in researching that, the basis and how that really came to be, it, it was discovered there were only three laws under which the airport could exist. And those laws specify under what conditions and what things must be done. One, one gives total autonomy to the county board, and one gives total autonomy to the airport, and then, and then there's another hybrid uh, okay. law. Who brought, you, said, you mentioned the state's attorney or the, the tell me that gentleman's name again. I, Mark uh, Isaac, Acre my, County State's Attorney, yes. yes. He, who, who brought it to his attention, or did he himself stumble upon this discovery? Oh. that statutorily they don't exist? Well, I, I think that question was raised by the Edgar County Watchdogs a year ago and has been raised at every county board meeting since. And, uh, and the reason, of course, is that there's been a lot of wrongdoing at the airport and uh, um, trying to, to get people to hold them accountable for, for the wrongdoing. And what we have discovered is that they mm. pick and choose whatever law suits them on that given day and that has been one of the central issues. And now that that has been resolved, uh, in, in the stroke of a pen, we now do not have an airport advisory board. And that, in, in a way, has been very good. 
if I went to these seven board members, they would say they have rare, every right to exist. We presume. Where do we find it on print? Who, who wins this debate? Well, I can give you the, the actual law statutes if you want, but I don't have them at the moment. Um, I can get that very quickly for you. Okay. So will they have another meeting, or did they agree to us dissolve? That's a tough question. That's a tough question. They've done so much for so long without following the rules that, that uh, I would hope that they would declare in the next meeting that they don't exist. But who knows? There's been so much go on that, that has been uh, outside of the law in many ways that it's hard to tell. When did you hear about this dual plane fire? Um, it was Monday night, Yes, right? right. About 4.30 uh, Tuesday morning, I received a text from a friend. And then in the process of looking at the text, I discovered that at 11.35 the preceding night, my son, Riley, had uh, texted me also, but I slept through the text. Okay. It, what was your reaction? Well, um, we did lose a son that was an aviator. And anything that has anything to do with the airport, there's two, two things that come to mind. One is the loss of our son and the wrongdoing and the corruption at the airport. So when that happened, I was terribly shocked and in disbelief. I uh, called my neighbor. We jumped in a pickup truck and drove up there. And uh, it's very, very hard to, to look at the airplane at first because uh, that's the plane that my son, the first plane that my son was able to get into uh, uh, his business on, on, a, on a lease agreement uh, and, and he put a lot of work and time and energy and I've been in the plane, I've flown in the plane and, and there's a personal attachment. We don't own the plane, understand, uh, but, but there was a personal attachment to the plane. Are you talking about Rusty's plane or the two that burned? The one two that burned, the two that burned. Okay. That's what the question Which one on the screen left or screen right? <clears throat> did, did you see our story? Yes, 106 Rob? Papa Tango is the red striped plane that is mostly intact. 106 PT is the tail number. 106 Papa Tango, yes. Okay. Is that the one that had your friendly little message on it? No, the what? other one, the one that said... Yeah. Yeah, that was the other plane. That was uh, 25... Okay. So this is the yeah. one that said, this is our airport. Yes, yes. Okay. That's the one Rusty cut his teeth in? Well, that was, that was one of the first aircraft. He was a charter pilot. Uh, he taught aviation flight school. Uh, was a crop duster, and he was, was known in, throughout the area in the industry as being a, 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 a very professional, very good at what he did. And he also was an AMP mechanic. So uh, yes, that one of the first people came to him and said, "Yes, I'll buy the plane and I'll park it out there." And uh, 